They, they are very close. I can see the flashing of the light bulbs going off in the corridor just outside. So they are just moments away from stepping into the room here. In fact, we should have a shot uh, just now of Rob Oakeshott and Tony Windsor entering into the room in the main committee room here at Parliament House. Right, and that is indeed the two independents. We've been waiting for them to announce their decision. They are right on time, pretty much on time, as far as political Wait press conferences go. <laughs> We've got Rob Oakeshott so there. We're, we're still, no, we're no, still <laughs> waiting for Tony Windsor. <laughs> Tony hasn't been seen? or okay. <laughs> I don't know what one can read into that. Barnaby Joyce, anything do you think that we've only still got one of the remaining two independents? Um, no, I'd just um, say it's a, that they'd be all. Sure um, they'd have the weight of the so of the nation on their shoulders, and they got well, this is they're realising the consequences of a decision. Well, he is going to, to wait for, for Tony Windsor no before campus. making his decision. He's waving there to the school children that Melissa Clark pointed out to us. We're having quite an extraordinary school excursion today, <laughs> because it will be an historic moment a, as a decision the is first announced. Deal is how the Cronulla Sharks can have a victory. <laughs> Chris Yulman, <laughs> well, he can still joke. Oh, we can still joke. Interestingly, though, there was the sense of chaos in the ranks among the independents a couple of hours ago when they brought forward their press conference, first of all, from three until two. Obviously, they had wind of what Bob Catter was going to do, and then they moved it back again to 3 p.m. because all the arrangements were in place. So uh, I don't think that organising this part of it has been part of their strong suit. Let's hope that organising government turns out to be just a little bit better. Well, indeed, Melissa Clark, you're still in that room. We've got Rob Oakeshott. Have we lost Tony Windsor? <laughs> this might be one of the benefits of being part of a party, as much as the independents uh, value their independence. When you have a party, you've got people who can help coordinate you all to arrive at the same time and that may well have been what they need right here at the moment but uh, uh, they're certainly looking relaxed and calm and Tony Windsor is just arriving now so it'll be just moments away before they start with this press conference. Thanks Melissa. We will take you now to Canberra for that press conference by Rob Oakeshott and Tony Windsor. But I'm easy either way. We right to go? Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, firstly, thank you for being here, and I do particularly appreciate some children from my electorate that are up the back from a number of schools, uh, Dungown, Summerton, uh, Nundle, Moomy and Atunga. Uh, welcome, kids. Uh, this probably will be a fairly historic uh, day. Well, I guess what you've really been wanting to know is who will form the government. Before uh, making a statement as to how I will vote, uh, I'd just like to thank both leaders for the way in which they've treated us as individuals through this process. And uh, I'd also like to thank the press, if I could, uh, even though you've been in our faces a bit. Uh, you have been very courteous and uh, you've, you've given us a degree of freedom that, uh, uh, that we have needed in relation to uh, uh, the decision-making uh, process. One of the things that we've looked to throughout this process is could a government be formed? You know, there's obviously three options. Uh, one, the coalition, two, the Labor Party, and, and the third option uh, being another election. Uh, we've also looked at the issues of uh, stability. If a government is formed, uh, how long could it last? And that's a key deliberation in our uh, view, and uh, Rob might uh, elaborate on that a bit later. Uh, how long could a, a parliament uh, actually, uh, a government actually last uh, with the numbers the way they are? Also, how what sort of a relationship would there be uh, in relation to the Senate, for instance? There are a number uh, of other issues, and both sides uh, of the debate uh, have put regional packages together, and I don't think that's any secret. And they've both done a great job. Uh, they really have. There's, there's differences, uh, but they have recognised quite clearly that regional Australia uh, has missed out in the past. So there's been some admissions in relation to that and some of the programs uh, that both sides have put together have been about trying to restore some of the equity 
uh, issues in relation to health and education and, and infrastructure. And we thank uh, both sides uh, for doing that. I intend, uh, with, with my vote, uh, for what it's worth, to support the Labor Party. Uh, Rob will make an announcement in the moment as to how he uh, intends to vote. The issues that I thought were critical to this, and possibly the most critical, was broadband. There's an enormous opportunity for regional Australians to engage with the infrastructure of this century and to pass up that opportunity and uh, miss the opportunity for uh, millions of country Australians, uh, I thought was too good an opportunity to miss. My advisers in relation to the broadband technology, and there are a number of them, uh, suggest that you do it once, you do it right, and you do it with fibre. And uh, that has been one of the major influences that I've had in terms of making a decision. There are many other issues, and uh, it's, it'll be up to uh, others to release the information. But one of the key issues in my mind that many country Australians uh, uh, might uh, take odds with me on this, is the renewable energy climate change debate. I think it is time that, given the politics that surrounded uh, the last parliament, the, the uh, Rudd, Turnbull, uh, Abbott uh, politics, it is time that we actually stood back and uh, revisited some of those issues not only in terms of a market mechanism or whether a carbon tax is the, is the way to go, but really have a look at what the globe is doing. Really have a look at some of these issues and try and revisit uh, some of those issues. And it is obvious to me that regional Australia would be a major beneficiary of a lot of the renewable energy sources. Uh, so I see enormous opportunities where others uh, uh, fear the whole climate change debate. There are enormous opportunities in that debate in relation to country Australians and regional Australians and the farm community, etc. The final thing that I'd say, and we'll probably be asked one or two questions, I gather, <laughs> uh, before handing over to Rob, and I, uh, you'll all go and look at my maiden speech after this, <laughs> uh, because and I hadn't looked at it for quite some time, but it was not really worth reading, but there's a... <laughs> but I'll go to part of it that I think was, because I think it's very pertinent to today's decision. Obviously, many people would have thought uh, the electorate of New England, given its history, uh, the member would possibly uh, vote with the coalition. When I first came into this place and when I was in the state parliament, one of the fascinating things about the political process was how country people never took advantage of their vote. Their vote was always sidelined. And uh, in a sense, uh, the national party, or the, originally the country party, was seen as the representative of country people. What has happened through the amalgamation or, or the coalition of the Nationals and the Liberal Party is that the country vote, and the same applies to country Labor and the Labor Party, the country vote has been subsumed into the two major parties, which are dominated by city-based majorities. And the elections have been fought on the western suburbs of our major cities. So the country issues haven't really come to the fore in relation to uh, the policy debate, because they've been assumed by one side and taken for granted by the other. And the fact that there are country independents in this building indicates that country people have had enough of that. The other issue that relates particularly to today's uh, debate is the fact that that 30% uh, that's been taken for granted isn't a majority and never will be but it is a very, very large minority vote. 
And what it needs to do, particularly since uh, well, over the last 15 years, where the two major parties are actually virtually the same in terms of policy, a few minor changes on the side, and we saw that at the election, where Tony Abbott went to the polls with the union movement's industrial relations legislation. And Julia Gillard went to the polls with the Liberal Party's vote people uh, policy. So we've seen this merging uh, of philosophies in a sense. And in that there's an enormous opportunity for country people through their representatives to deal with either side of the parliament and actually take political advantage of that moment. And that's exactly what we're doing here. Exactly what we're doing here is actually taking advantage of that moment and sending a signal to country people that if you want to be taken for granted in the future, go back to the old ways, because that's exactly what will happen to you. The admission by both parties through their, their various documents that they've put together, the admission is that they have neglected country Australians. Yeah. And they are attempting through this process, because of the way the numbers have been crunched, to try and rectify that particular situation. So I make this plea to country people, uh, some of whom would think, uh, who don't agree with the Labor Party. This isn't about philosophy. Philosophy in terms of both these parties died, died about a decade ago, or probably longer. Uh, this is about using the political system to advantage the people we represent and those people uh, in regional Australia. So I just repeat again, and I do conclude, uh, my vote uh, will be going uh, to the Gillard government. It will only support, uh, uh, well, I won't support no confidence motions, uh, trivial no confidence motions. I will support supply and uh, I will reserve the right to represent my constituency on any vote in the parliament and also reserve the right to move a no confidence motion uh, in the government as I see fit. Thank you very much.